Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the South Indian Bank Limited Q3 FY22 Earnings Conference Call, hosted by Antic Stock Broking. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. And there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sohel Halai from Antic Stock Broking. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Lizanne. Yeah, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining the call. Today, we have with us senior management from South Indian Bank, represented by Mr. Murli Ramakrishnan, MD and CEO, Mr. Thomas Joseph, EVP and Group Business at Sales, Mr. Anto George, uh, Senior General Manager, HR and Admin, Mr. Sanchez Sina, Head Liability and Branch Banking, Mr. Leela Nand, Head Treasury, Ms. Chitra, Chief Financial Officer, and Ms. Minu, uh, GM Credit. Uh, the call is to discuss 3Q FI attorney earnings and also uh, to look at the future outlook of the bank. I would request Mr. Ramkrishnan, sir, to give his opening remarks, post which we can open the floor for Q&A. Over to you, sir. Uh, sorry to interrupt, so we're not able to hear you. Thank you. Good morning to all of you, and thank you for joining us for the South Indian Bank Q3 FI22 Earnings Conference call. We are joined by my colleagues, Mr. Thomas Joseph, EVP and Group Business Head, Sales, Mr. Anto Jaj T, Head HR and Admin, Mr. Sanjay Sinha, Head Retail Liabilities, Mr. Leelanand, Head Treasury, and Ms. Chitra, CFO, and Ms. Minu, uh, GM Credit. We hope that you and your family are safe and healthy. We continue to appreciate the efforts of our employees who have shown strong resilience and the ability to adapt to changing circumstances. Let me start with a brief update on consolidation of our loan portfolio. As per our stated strategy, the bank intends to build granular loan portfolio. Over the past five years, the bank churned about 80, over the past five quarters, the bank churned about 30% of its loan book with better underwriting mechanism. The new book based on the accounts opened since October 1, 2020 is rupees 18,000 crores. The overall average ticket size has decreased from rupees 17 lakhs as of September 30, 2020 to less than rupees 14 lakhs as of December 31, 2021. We are seeing consistent growth in our disbursement across the products quarter on quarter in this financial year. The bank achieved an overall disbursement of rupees 16,800 crores during nine months ended December 21. Further, we saw a record disbursement of rupees 7,901 crores during the current quarter ended December 21, which was 81% higher than the same quarter previous year. Coming to the corporate lending, we have disbursed about Rs. 7,600 crores during the nine months ended December 21, predominantly the A and above rated corporates. The share of A and above rated large corporates has improved from 63% as at March 31, 2021 to 82% as at December 31, 2021. It's worth highlighting that we have zero delinquency on new corporate book. Gold portfolio is a segment which has been consistently growing throughout the pandemic. We saw a disbursement of about 5,200 crores during nine months ended December 21 with an average ticket size of about 1,40,000 rupees and LTV of 74%. Personal loan is another segment where we are witnessing good traction since the launch of pre approved PL in September this year. We are seeing steady monthly disbursement run rate of around rupees 85 crores. As far as SME is concerned, given limited quality credit opportunity at desired pricing, we are cautiously growing this segment with the monthly disbursement averaging at rupees 250 crores in comparison to the average of 175 crores in the first two quarters. We continue to support our existing borrowers with good credit history. The most important part of the new book is that we have seen very low delinquency. Another focus area where the bank has put in a lot of efforts over the past few quarters is on recoveries and collection. The bank has taken multiple initiatives to strengthen the recovery process like beefing up collection team, onboarding collection agencies across the country, alignment of recovery team with asset verticals, and implementation of new collection system. These initiatives have helped the bank to do a record recovery and upgrade, including recovery from technical return of accounts, of Rs. 928 crores non-performing accounts in nine months ended December 21, compared to last full year performance of Rs. 600 crores. Further, the recovery during the quarter was without any major consortium account resolution. We are targeting to achieve full year recovery of around 1,200 crores, which if it happens will be 100% more than the last year. 
Further, following the robust collection drive within the bank, our SME2 portfolio has consistently improved quarter on quarter from Rs. 2,139 crores in Q1 2022 to Rs. 1,330 crores in Q3 2022. This has in turn led to an improvement in collection efficiency quarter on quarter from 87.7% in Q1 22. 95.1% in Q2 2022 to 100.6% in Q3 2022. Coming to the Indian economy, lately we are seeing sudden spurt in COVID cases and there is a threat of new Omicron virus variant looming over the economy. Many states have begun to put restrictions on economic activity, which may impact businesses to some extent. However, compared to second wave, most people are vaccinated and hospitalization rates in third wave are less across the states. We are hopeful that the Indian economy will be back on the path of economic growth once the intermittent pulse of COVID third wave stabilizes. The bank is closely assessing the impact of third wave on our borrowers and will provide suitable assistance and support if needed. Let me take you through key highlights of the operational and financial performance for this quarter. The total business for the bank stands at 1,45,757 crores as at December 31, 2021. Retail deposits rose by 10% year-on-year to 84,151 crores. Casa deposits increased by 21% year on year to Rs. 28,229 crores, predominantly due to continued improvement in our SA business, which grew by 21% year on year to 23,569 crores. Casa ratio account, uh, Casa ratio continued to improve and increased by 113 bits Q on Q to reach 32% of the total deposits as of December 31, 2021. Bulk deposits declined by 40% year on year to Rs. 4,197 crores in line with our strategy. NRA deposits, which has been growing steadily, rose by 5% year-on-year to Rs. 27,144 crores and continued contributes about 31% of the total deposits. Low-cost NRA deposits grew by 7% year-on-year to Rs. 8,424 crores. The bank saw a robust growth of 35% year-on-year in an NRA remittance business during the quarter. Advances grew on a sequential basis to Rs. 59,229 crores. We continue to see good traction in our gold loan with the consistent growth of 12% year-on-year to reach 9,862 crores as of December 31, 2021. The bank continues to calibrate and churn corporate portfolio with better rated corporates. The share of A and above rated corporates in large corporate book, that is 100 crores and above, improved from 79% at September 21 to 82% in December 21. During that quarter, we have seen good traction in recently launched pre-approval pre-approved personal loans. We continue to selectively grow our SME portfolio and disburse Rs. 800 crores of SME MSME loans in the quarter ended December 31, 2021. Our investment book was at Rs. 21,066 crores, of which HTM category contributed to 18,585 crores, while AFS contributed to 2,455 crores. The bank witnessed slippages of Rs. 387 crores during Q3 2022, which were in line with the guidance given for FI22. Personal and business segments continue to feel the impact of the COVID. The bank has restructured Rs. 1,970 crores worth of loans under COVID OTR framework, of which business segment is 1,024 crores, personal segment is 306 crores, and corporate is 640 crores. The bank's collection efficiency improved from 95% in Q2 2022 to 101% in Q3 2022. The overall collection efficiency for the month of October, November, December 21 were 100%, 99%, and 102% respectively. Gross NPA improved by 9 bits from 6.65% as at September 30, 2021 to 6.56% as at December 31, 2021. During that quarter, the bank was able to recover or upgrade Rs. 291 crores worth of NPAs. The net NPA ratio improved by 33 bits from 3.83% as at September 30, 2021 to 3.52% as at December 31, 2021. Net interest income for the quarter increased by 9% Q on Q to 573 crores. Net interest margin improved by 15 bips Q on Q to 2.64% in Q3 2022. Sequential growth in CASA has led to an improvement in cost of deposits by 17 bips Q on Q to reach 4.67%. Non-interest income was flat at Rs. 222 crores. Our core fee income increased by 23% year on year to Rs. 127 crores. Over 346 crores in Q3 FI22, these provisions include 279 crores towards NPA and NPA and standard asset provisions of Rs. 40 crores. Our PCR improved from 65.02% as at September 30, 2021 to 68.08% as at December 31, 2021. PCR excluding write-off improved by 410 bips to 48% as at 
December 31, 2021, compared to 43.9 percent as at September 30, 2021. Our overall capital adequacy ratio continues to be robust with 15.68 percent as at December 31, 2021. The tier one ratio stands at 12.72 percent as at December 31, 2021. We are hopeful that the momentum and disbursements in collection will continue in the coming quarters with the headwinds in the economy tapering. With this, we open the floor for questions. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Gautami Desai from Chanakya Capital Services Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, Gautami, your line is in the talk mode. Please go ahead. Yeah, I, yeah. You can hear me, right? Uh, yes. Hello, yes. can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so we are very patient investors, and we really appreciate that you know, uh, that the bank is trying to grow without a capital raise, uh, and we request you to continue doing the same. So congratulations for that. Uh, and sir, uh, uh, you you've been and even the presentation and just now also you spoke clearly about your growth uh, in the gold loan and the corporate. So similarly, can you can you take us to you know your growth across verticals, and where are you seeing you know more? Where is your focus on right now? Like where are you more hopeful about? Like I could see some of your vehicle loans going up and things like that. So can you throw some light on that? Yeah, um, uh, in fact, I've covered as part of my uh, initial talk. We are actually focusing on uh, doing the good quality business across segments. So as um, explained in the past, we are focusing on growing uh, retail and SME business because traditionally this bank had a um, uh, lumpy lumpiness in the corporate book. So as a conscious strategy, the bank was continuously trying to reduce the uh, dependence on bulky corporate loans. So in tune with that, the corporate loan portfolio, which was contributing in excess of 45% to the total loan book is now has come down to 24 to 25%. However, to uh, granularize the risk, etc., the focus was uh, uh, turned towards SME and retail. But in the last uh, one and a half years, uh, uh, since the COVID pandemic has started, you know that this is the segment which is also most vulnerable because they have seen the biggest uh, shocks. Therefore, we are, uh, as we uh, witness the impact of this on the market, uh, we are continuously tweaking our strategy to ensure that we do find opportunities uh, in good, well-rated corporate. So. Corporate book, as you must have uh, heard from my talk, that we are looking at well-rated corporates, and the composition of that book has grown up substantially. And we have also seen zero delinquency in the new book which got created. Apart from this, we are definitely growing our gold loan book, which you know that the credit risk is negligible and almost zilch. And uh, we are growing quite well without uh, compromising on LTV. And uh, we are also growing um, SME very, uh, very cautiously by ensuring that we uh, incre increase our underwriting uh, standards. We have improved our underwriting standards and we're ensuring that the new book which gets created uh, doesn't slip. And we have seen good traction happening over there. In this quarter, you must have heard me saying that we have done about close to about 850 crores of, um, uh, in the three months. And uh, if you look at uh, the other uh, retail business which are growing quite well is PL, where um, we are actually now churning our existing liability, existing huge customer base which we have. Uh, we have more than 6.8 million customer base and we are using our analytics which is newly formed the division about a year back. We are using analytics to uh, get insights about the customers who can be given pre-approved offers. So through and that is started giving us good traction and we are also seeing that it has very, very negligible uh, slippages. So that is something which is now getting traction and we are now averaging about 75 to 85 crores a month and it is coming at a good yield of 14% plus. And um, I'm sure you must have heard me in the past talking about the, the credit card type which we have done with the FPL, which is a, uh, 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 whose uh, 
uh, which is a fintech, which is uh, into credit card business, and uh, we have started issuing credit cards, uh, a co-branded card with um, SIB uh, emblem, and that's that's something which has taken off quite well. Uh, already, we have seen, issued more than 20,000 cards, and uh, we are hoping to ramp it up in the in the coming quarter too. And there, we have started now getting a good traction in terms of the book getting built over there. Uh, as I am talking to you, we are seeing it crossing 50 crores of um, credit card book. So it's a brand new business for us, but this business comes with a good ROA. So net net, if you ask me, I think uh, everywhere we are focusing on good quality business. And as far as home and mortgages are concerned, we are uh, tweaking the uh, policies, we are tweaking the process flow. We are also strengthening the infrastructure needed for good quality underwriting. But we have seen good traction happening now in the sourcing of uh, new home loans uh, with the new uh, uh, DMA, DSCs coming up and uh, with the way we have formed the vertical with uh, cluster rates and uh, branches uh, focusing on existing and walking customers and with uh, DMA, DSC sourcing market, um, I mean new cases from the market and with the churning of the existing customer base where we can offer good quality home loan and mortgages. We have started seeing sourcing improving. Obviously, for it to really reflect in the book, uh, it is though we are dispersing, but then the rundown there is uh, happening due to the aggressive pricing which is uh, there in the market. But we are hoping to see good traction happening once we get this um, fully uh, streamlined. So, uh, by and large, I think uh, we are growing in every possible opportunity where there is a possibility of getting good quality customers. With improved underwriting standards, I am hoping to build a good quality book, which is the only remedy for uh, take, uh, taking control of the slippages which is happening due to the legacy book. So how about vehicle loans? What's your experience there? Yeah, very good. Uh, all the new vehicle loans also which you have disbursed has been pretty good. And there again, we are using the existing customer base to pre-approve vehicle loans. So and which also segment is, which I, within, within vehicle, which segment uh, you are seeing attraction? Auto, auto loans. I mean, it's, we are doing it very selectively and uh, uh, our volume is not that large. And you know that vehicle loans generally come at very aggressive pricing. So we are also very conscious that we do only where the credit quality is good and where we don't see any possibility of slippages, even though margin-wise it might be a little less. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of M Mahesh MB from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. Uh, just a couple of questions. One is that uh, in, when you are now uh, recovering these loans which have defaulted out there, what has been the kind of experience that you have seen in terms of uh, enforcing the collateral as compared to the borrowers coming back and repaying the, the underlying dues? And how long is it taking for you to now recover the asset as compared to probably about a couple of quarters back? Yeah, uh, see, uh, as far as collection and recovery is concerned, uh, we are continuing to, we have one, we have first of all created a good infrastructure for uh, doing a very focused collection and recovery. So we have formed a separate collection team and particularly for handling retail collections, we have tied up with agencies across the country and um, now the agencies have completely taken charge of doing collections. Earlier this was done by the branch resources and given the number of cases which they needed to collect from and uh, the same team was also focusing on SME and other collections. Clearly the focus on retail was becoming less on the branch side. So but now we are using agencies to do a very focused collection on the retail side. Now with the bandwidth released uh, of retail collections from the branches, now branches are focusing on SME and Agri and other collections which uh, which are basically branch led businesses and as far as the big corporates are concerned clearly wherever we are sole bankers etc we are engaging one of and we are uh, using all the possible uh, uh, rules under the country to ensure that we negotiate hard and we get a good value for money see it's, i would say that uh, uh, we uh, uh, are looking at the opportunity of trying to close it at the earliest rather than waiting for a few more years where the ultimate uh, uh, net present value for whatever you realize in future may not really be worth it. Therefore, we try and enter into one-time settlement wherever there's a possibility of doing and wherever we are uh, we are seeing that uh, legally we can take a quick recourse by enforcing surface and taking charge of the assets and uh, disposing talk through options, etc. So we are we are progressing on all directions to ensure that uh, we clean up the book and uh, you must have heard me talking about how SMA2 book is now uh, getting cleaned up and we have brought it down substantially. In fact, as we 
continuing to do traction of this we are bringing to trying to bring it down below 1000 crores uh, in the in the shortest possible time and this is clearly happening due to focused collection so that we don't let them slip into npa uh, in fact the case in point is that i i have been uh, uh, giving um, uh, guidance of 400 to 450 crores for q3 and we ended with less than 400 crores uh, clearly much lower than what i had anticipated and we hope to uh, uh, sp speed up our recovery in q4 also and you remember that q3 recovery has happened without any bulk settlement which has come in q2 we had the advantage of dhfl helping us with a, a good quality a good recovery whereas in q3 it was all granular and uh, smaller and medium sized deals without any uh, big deal which got uh, which got resolved in q4 hopefully one or two of them uh, kicks in then we will probably be achieving more than what we are targeting to do overall if you look at the overall collection for this year till q3 we have done uh, close to 880 crores of uh, upgrade compared to what we did of 600 crores for the full year last year and i'm hoping that we will um, surpass 1200 crores by march which means we would have we would have done more than 100% of recovery compared to previous year so this is the, as far as the collection and recovery is concerned to so with regard to your question on how we are um, planning to handle the uh, uh, legacy book which continues to give slippages i mean you you could have you would have seen the way we have been managing it in the last few quarters uh, by doing aggressive collection by doing aggressive recovery by also uh, providing proactively and also selling off uh, assets where we have uh, where we feel that they it makes lot of sense to uh, uh, put it to a specialist like ars is to handle where we work very closely with them to ensure that recovery resolution happens and wherever we have provided for fully we are also writing the writing them off uh, so as to uh, manage the overall uh, percentage of uh, gnp so if you look at my gnp uh, the fact that it has improved from 8.01% in q1 to whatever we have declared now there is a very clear uh, continuous action happening in bringing down the overall gnp levels and we will uh, it's it's a uh, uh, very difficult to say by when we will completely clean it up because of, because of two reasons one is uh, market is still uh, you we still continues to suffer with the covid pandemic and therefore there is always this issue of uh, uh, movement lock movement uh, getting restricted and course not functioning and many of the uh, drt etc also there are delays in having judges etc so all this actually comes in the way of you know faster resolution but we are hoping that um, the covid 3 impact may not be as bad as covid 2 uh, if that supports us definitely we will uh, do a very aggressive uh, uh collection and recovery with the new head uh, having taken over as recovering collection and with the uh, restructured team of uh, team under under the new head uh, we are seeing a good traction happening across all segments so just one clarification what will be your outstanding ecl gs exposure today sorry i i didn't get it come again uh, ecl gs exposure ah just a second just give me a minute Just give me a minute. I'm just taking the numbers. And, and while you are looking at the data, just qualitatively, have you been, uh, have you started seeing slippages in this book, and have you seen re reimbursements coming in from the credit guarantee corporation? Yeah, I, I'll answer both the questions. Just hold on for a minute. Yeah. See, ECLGS, uh, uh, you know that we have uh, ECLGS one, two, three, and four, and then there's an ECLGS one extension, two extension, three extension, four extension. All these have happened. Uh, with various guidelines which have come in the total number of total number of accounts which we have done it is structuring as per this is about 10859 accounts amounting to 3339 3, crores and uh, as uh, gross advances as of december is about 2434 crores and uh, 166 crores have become np out of that and uh, this has predominantly happened in the ecl gs1 when uh, the bank had actually offered uh, unilaterally to all the customers and only those who wanted to opt out Uh, came and opted out. So we are seeing NPAs happening only in that. But uh, as far as ACLs two and onwards are concerned, we have done a very careful uh, analysis of the viability of the cases which we are restructuring. We hope that uh, we will not have see that much of slippages happening from ACLs two onwards. But however, it all as you know, it all depends on how the market uh, supports uh, recovery and collection and various other resolutions. So just one clarification: three thousand three hundred and thirty-nine crores represents the loans under that ECLGS product, or is it the disbursements made under the ECLGS product? 
it's a sanction limit. 3,000 is the sanction limit of which the gross advance is outstanding as on 31-12 2004-34. Okay. And this, one, and this uh, 169 crores which has become NPLs, uh, you got the repayment from the credit bureau, uh, from the credit guarantee corporation? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that is the current yeah. continuous process and we have been, uh, yes, that is happening. So you've had no negative experiences so far with the credit guarantee corporation on the no, ECLGS disbursement? Not at all. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. That is on the line of Anirvan Sarkar from Max Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, uh, one question. So, uh, what's your view on, you know, your SME portfolio and your restructured loans? We are seeing, uh, you know, reports saying that uh, banks are now... A demanding an extension of ECLGS and moratorium on that. So if things are all good, then it leads to the question that why is this demand being raised? Yeah, no, the, I think it's uh, uh, the question which I answered just now. I read out the numbers which we did as uh, ECLGS uh, and all those extension also forming part of that uh, number which I read out. So um, see, as for the... Um, uh, as far as the uh, uh, ETLGS portfolio in SME specifically, if you look at it, uh, uh, this is said now. We this is uh, so uh, see as far as the ETLGS is concerned, wherever we we felt that the viability of the case is uh, clearly established, we are going ahead and restructuring. And wherever we believe that the moratorium extension which we were to provide as per the revised guideline. When we see cash flows um, are showing a traction where they will be able to survive and uh, repay, we are doing that. So we are fully adhering to the guidelines which uh, is being brought out and we are applying uh, our underwriting mechanism to ensure that we do for the right cases. So as we uh, experience the recovery, uh, I mean, once the moratorium the period gets over and as we see repayments start happening, we will, uh, because we have, it's not that immediately we are given moratorium of 12 months and 24 months. Wherever customers have opted for much lesser moratorium also, we have given lesser moratorium and we are seeing that the customers are repaying once the moratorium period gets over. So, as far as, uh, I mean, as of now, uh, it's really not a great cause of concern for me. But having said that, uh, since uh, COVID has impacted SMEs uh, and retail to a large extent, we continuously closely monitor as to what is happening in this event. Sure, sure. And sir, on uh, on core profitability now, our core PPOP2 asset uh, is on the lower side. It, we are at about, uh, uh, you know, 60 to 80 basis points of P and uh, plus our margins minus OPEX. So it, it would come to less than 1% basically. And uh, so what's the trajectory we can expect here? Should we expect any kind of improvement going here ahead? But, because otherwise, you know, our ROAs are going to remain low. And even with some improvement in credit costs in the future, if our core PPOP doesn't improve, then ROA is likely to remain low. So what's our view on that? Yeah, see, uh, uh, ROA, ROA obviously will start uh, becoming positive only when we start actually uh, giving positive uh, profit. So uh, right now, uh, in the last over the last 15 months, as that is stated strategy, we are churning the uh, existing book, which had the quality issues. We are now uh, sort of churning them for with the better and better quality assets getting added. At the same time, resolving the earlier uh, book in the best possible way. And while doing that, what are all the products which we can focus on, which will probably give us much better yield. So that's the reason why we started focusing on uh, personal loan, started having a type for credit card. We are also now looking at uh, uh, a few other opportunities where we can probably get much better uh, rates. Uh, so, uh, like for example, commercial banking activity is something which we are now looking at it seriously because many of the corporate customers are semi-customers, where we can look at a fee-based income, um, uh, where we can look at 100% uh, uh, LC back uh, discounting, etc. Where we are already there, but we will probably start doing more of them. And we are also looking at the products like gold loan, etc., where the credit risk will be negligible. So it's a it's a journey. I think today. Uh, my NIM is definitely improving, and you can see the NIM has improved uh, even despite the market rates being um, uh, moving towards, moving southwards. Still, our uh, advances uh, uh, rate of interest is uh, continues to be almost at the same level for the last six quarters. 
seven quarters. Our cost of deposits has continuously been coming down because due to the efforts of CASA contribution going up and due to the fact that we are continuing to raise uh, more money at a lower deposit cost. And this journey will continue. And as we see, uh, the uh, advances uh, difference between the yield on advances to the cost of deposits will only keep going up because we will continue to ensure that uh, our cost keep, keeps coming down, our advances are uh, equipped with the high yielding products. But on the other side, we have a treasury which is also contributing to the overall uh, name. There, uh, if you see, due to the uh, adopted strategy of the bank to reduce the duration, etc., yield on investments clearly is uh, uh, coming down. And uh, given the fact that uh, the, there is limited opportunity for good quality assets in the market, the surplus which we have, we are also deploying it in alternate uh, opportunities. And we have also uh, diversified our income uh, from treasury by going for arbitrage opportunities, by going for currency uh, uh, and even in uh, taking part in IPOs, etc. Those uh, streams have started giving us a uh, good stream of income. Now with the new treasury system coming into place, we will obviously uh, be doing more in those activities also. So it's a journey which, you, uh, which we are going through and uh, definitely the uh, milestone for me is to reach 3% NIM. Uh, our aim is to reach it as ASAP because that's the only way we can ensure that with the, with the provisioning hit coming down and with the income going up, Certainly, the bank can turn around to a positive results, but the journey will go on for, in my view, uh, depending on how the market also is conducive for uh, slippages not happening and uh, helping us in doing better collection and helping us to manage the existing uh, uh, book. At the same time, sourcing more and more of good quality new assets, which are better needed, and continuously tweaking our liability strategy. All right, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I'll come back in the case I have any more questions. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is in the line of Jay Mundra from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon, sir. And uh, thanks for the opportunity. I have a couple of questions. Uh, so one is, um, I think there is, you have, you have restated the numbers uh, uh, and you have taken the recovery from write-off accounts in usual other income versus uh, what we were netting off from provisions till last quarter. Right. But at the same time, it looks like that the MTSation you have kept as negative item in the other income, right? Uh, why is that so? Because I remember, I mean, my understanding is that RBI, uh, I mean, in the re revised circular, there was no such thing, right? So you, is there, uh, I mean, could you, could you have written, I mean, could you have retained MTM in provisions or MTM depreciation is now mandated to come as a negative uh, line item in NII, in other income? Uh, uh, Chitra, you want to answer this? Uh, I think uh, she, she'll, she'll be able to answer it. Chitra, are you there? Uh, sir, uh, can speak question because since I am in quarantine, I am afraid uh, line is not very clear for me. Uh, okay. Anyway, we know you can answer. Sir, uh, regarding the depreciation on investment, it has to be netted off with the other income. That is the RBI circular as of now. Only the amount required from uh, return of accounts, we have to uh, adjust in the, uh, come back to the provision, come back to the other income. Earlier it was adjusted in the provision. So that part is, is also clear that yeah. we have done. His question is on MTM. I think that this was due to that uh, uh, ARCC. That, yeah, one of the, no, one of the accounts in uh, Keshwara. No, no, this is uh, in uh, other income, investment in depreciation. That is with the ARC. See, last, last quarter, if you recall, we had uh, sold two uh, pools to ARCs where we had to take uh, provisioning under uh, 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 as per the uh, assets, those, those have like, continued in our books, so that was there. This, this time, obviously, we have not done any sale, therefore, that is clearly not there. This time, what we have also done is that a recovery which we have done from the fully written off accounts, which is about five crores for this quarter, which has been shown under other income, which was earlier classified under provision and contingency. If you have any specific question, probably you can, uh, uh, we'll get in touch with you, we'll clarify, because I don't know whether I have answered your question fully. Sure, sure no worries, no worries, sir. Okay, and second thing, sir, is on your growth strategy, right? So, uh, what you are doing is you are churning the book in favor of better rated corporates. 
but at the same time i wanted to understand this more because you know uh, are you lending on mclr or external repo or fixed rate because it is slightly difficult to assume that you know your mclr rates are at least you know, let us say 80 to 100 basis point higher than uh, some of the larger banks and even they are having some challenges on growing their better rated corporate because the pricing seems very very fine at market place so when you are uh, seeing a higher growth in better rated corporates how are you doing i mean is it uh, what is the strategy here and would it, uh, it, it would it continue or you want to build a bank with slightly better focus on commercial slash sme book yeah go a good question see uh, let me answer it uh, in two ways one is uh, uh, as you said rightly uh, we were, we have obviously benchmarked uh, these uh, these uh, lending which we do to better rate corporates uh, with uh, with either uh, t bill or with uh, repo rates depending on whichever is uh, uh, whichever is making us competitive and second we are looking at this as an opportunity in comparison to the alternate op- opportunities which we have because it, uh, clearly due to lack of good quality long term assets etc we are we definitely have a surplus and this surplus we are deploying for exploiting the uh, opportunities which are there and i am doing it with a very conscious effort because many of these triple a corporates once i get into triple a or a and above rated corporates once i get in lending today i am able to deepen my relationship with them by offering products like uh, dealer financing vendor financing even uh, uh, retail loans to the employees of those corporates etc so overall this is very much in tune with um, the ecosystem concept which uh, anyway has been popular now where a relationship to ro is being looked at even though you might have a very fine rate uh, as far as the corporate is concerned but overall the yield from the corporate will be much better due to the various other opportunities out there secondly we are not looking at really to tie it up for a long term because we know that long term the rates are going to go up so we don't want to tie up our sales tie our sales up with a very low rate in the long run so wherever it is 3 months 6 months 9 months within let's say 9 months to 12 months we definitely if we believe that we are we can uh, get a decent yield in comparison to the alternatives which we are uh, deploying we are making it as an opportunity to acquire uh, customers who otherwise we wouldn't have had an opportunity to get it so this is the strategy as far as corporate banking is concerned but having said that will it continue uh, for uh, uh, years to come clearly it is today we are using it because we have surplus and once the economy revives and if we see more and more good quality assets in the market obviously we would want to grow uh, you know a regular advances book where we'll be offering uh, tenors of um, let's say three years or four years for a retail or uh, working capital and term loan for smes and agri products etc that obviously and even for corporates uh, term loans and uh, the other project loans etc where you can probably tie it up for a little longer period today due to lack of opportunities in any new big projects coming up etc we are effectively using it instead of actually uh, putting this money into very low yielding alternate options or giving to poor rated uh, uh, individuals or smes understood so on on the sme side sir if i see that you are seeing a qoq decline for the last five quarters and of course the environment is not very certain because of this covid and everything then this this segment clearly is more impacted but at the same time other large private banks are seeing a very phenomenal growth in business banking or you know commercial space so um, uh, uh, i mean uh, if if i were to understand how much of your degrowth in msme is coming because of competition and you know how much is because you are getting cautious so how should one look at it so it's very difficult to quantify with numbers but let me tell you what uh, as a strategy we are doing see today what is happening in sme there are two three issues which i think one should be very clear about one is as you said rightly the covid has impacted the smes and retail to a very large extent which is clearly evident from sme uh, 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 slippages uh, clearly evident in sme and retail slippages clearly evident from Um, many of the banking many of the banks have come up with results etc having said that so you have a choice of uh, wanting to lend just to, for the growth of this segment you can continue to lend and you can continue to suffer from slippages happening because nobody is too clear about how the market will pan out for particularly uh, the smes whose resourcefulness is obviously very limited and many of the business models have come in for uh, uh, shock due to the covid continuing covid pandemic continuing so if you look at 
the other side is the rate at which these deals are done in the market today obviously there is no pricing to the risk which is happening in the market so clearly large banks i won't say it's that the blame but it's a is probably it's an adaptive strategy they are actually going and offering rates which are clearly inconsistent with the riskiness of those cases but they are riding on to maybe the good behavior of those customers with the existing bankers and even though they they could be compromising on security which is going to be offered by the borrower or the rate which is going to be far lower or enhancement which they might be seeking they have a choice of either wanting to retain customers by going down on your pricing and uh, uh, and retaining your customer or somewhere you need to say that this is not something which is going to help me in my overall scheme of what i would want to drive for the bank so we are taking it as it comes and we are obviously playing the service summary is uh, definitely worth keeping it in our books we fight and we ensure that they stay and we also try and work with the customer to ensure the overall deepening of the customer relationship happens and we improve the overall roi coming from the customer wherever we feel that the rates which are offered by Uh, the competition is far lower which has no relevance to the riskiness and if we believe that even the existing limits are far higher and if over and above that if somebody is seeking enhancement clearly to fund his losses or fund his um, lack of receivables etc we believe it's only going to add problem to us so we let it account go so it's a, i would say it's a combination of these and having said that there are segments in smes where we know that we with a good collateral and with a uh, cash flow assessment happening where we have a gst data etc where we believe that it is a good uh, company to uh, uh, deal with we definitely keep lending and that's the reason why we are saying that sme new disbursement is clearly <laughs> we are showing a good growth in new disbursement of sme sme book degrowth is happening for two three reasons book degrowing is happening due to a slippages of sme book into npa that is one second restructuring of sme cases which i i read out earlier also almost 1000 crores smes were restructured due to the covid pandemic and three very low rate sme which today are uh, lured by big banks clearly with a rate which are not priced to the risk and therefore we need to make as a bank uh, to take a call whether it's worth retaining them or we let it go so i am not unduly worried about the lack of growth happening in the sme book I know that I am churning the book for the better return SME with a better quality SME, and this will only really help us in our strategy of churning the book for better quality, so that my slippages will keep coming down. So long as my SME one, SME two restructured uh, book list, uh, which I need to grapple with, I will definitely be expressing caution. More so due to the fact that I have seen SME cycle over the last several years of my banking. This is a segment which one needs to really handle correctly, otherwise we can easily. get uh, get uh, distracted into building a very poor quality book great sir thank you so much i have few more questions i will come back in the queue thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of lalit bio from equitas securities please go ahead yes uh, good morning sir thanks for the opportunity uh so could you uh, highlight the trends on the restructured book like uh, how has been the npa experience from the restructured book and how how much provisions do we carry on the restructured book uh, yes sir yeah it is Ladies and gentlemen, we seem to have lost the line for the management. Please stay connected while we try to reconnect with the management. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for patiently holding. We now have the line for the management reconnected. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, the question which you asked about uh, uh, the slippages from this such a book, I just want to give you a, a, a detailed picture of that. We have in all about. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm talking about Kerala flood researching which we had, then researching happening due to DCCU extension, and then MSME researching uh, which is based on GST uh, one, and then we do one. 
COVID-2, uh, COVID-1, which we have done for personal loans, MSME and other exposures. Similarly, COVID-2 for personal loan, personal loan meaning consumer segment and MSME and other exposures. So in all, we have to total standard restructured book of both 3,737 crores, out of which uh, 870 crores have slipped into NP, and these slippages have predominantly happened in the flood segment and in the MSME restructuring uh, which had happened in the past, which we, which we had done in the past. So in all about the overall book, if you look at it, it's about 23.49 percent is the slippages, and we have got about 180 crores which were upgraded or closed. So overall, it has come down by about 112 crores, and as we are talking, it's at about 2,567 crores. That's the outstanding standard researcher book today. And we have seen very negligible uh, slippages. Obviously, uh, since of course moratorium is also there, we need to see how. Uh, this will behave after the monitoring gets lifted, but by and large, we see that uh, 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 the slippages are predominantly in the flood restructuring and in the MSME restructuring in the past. And thank you, sir. And sir, like, what will be the provisions on the correct standard restructured book? That's as per the regulations. It is about okay. uh, five or five percent. Okay, sir. And sir, uh, so could you give us like uh, the broad composition of the new loan book which has been generated post the September 20th, which is about 18,000 crores? Yeah, sure. That's it. Yeah, it's about, uh, I mean, predominantly it is, as I said, it's, uh, it's a retail is about 4,400 crores. I'm telling you approximate numbers. Retail is about 4,400 crores. Corporate is about 4,600 crores. Business segment is about 1,680 crores. And Agri is about 7,290 crores, which includes uh, gold, etc. Okay, so, thank you. So, sir, like, as you mentioned that, like, we, we have uh, churned about 20% of the legacy book. So, now with the churning going on, so, what could be our loan growth uh, targets for like for FY23 and FY24? So any specific uh, number you are looking at? Uh, so we actually, as you know, we came out with a mission document uh, last, uh, I mean, in September 2020. That was obviously much before COVID-1 impact and um, obviously we never knew about COVID-2 and COVID-3. Where I talked about we wanting to reach uh, 1 lakh crore by 2024 March. That's what we had indicated. Uh, clearly, that was those uh, projections were made with, uh, with the assumption that uh, the market will uh, get over this uh, COVID and we will not have any uh, problems of, it will be like any regular, econ regular normal growth in the economy. Clearly, that is not to be so because last two years, I think the country as well as the world has seen uh, never before uh, economic impact on the various segments. So, suffice to say that we may not, uh, uh, we would definitely look for good quality assets and we are not letting down our uh, need to grow asset book with, uh, with which are good high yielding asset book and with a good quality asset book because this is in tune with what I have been stating as my strategy of profitable growth through quality credit. But between growth and credit quality, definitely I would, uh, 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 till such time I have a full hold on uh, legacy book completely getting handled. I will continue to build a book with high quality. Therefore, if it, if it happens with a little less of growth, I am fine with that. Uh, because I'm, I'm, I know for sure that today, even with the limb which I'm earning, even with operating profit which I have, if I have a clean book, I, my profits will definitely be far, uh, will be much, much better than the loss which I'm showing today. So I need to improve my matrices in terms of PCR, in terms of GNP, net NP, and therefore I need to continue to have a grip on them. But having said that, clearly for each product, um, uh, Q3, in fact, if you ask me, Q3 is the first quarter where we have had a three months of actual, normal, fairly normal economy. And we have shown that the bank is capable of doing good disbursement in the three months. If only the economy continues the way it is, it was in Q3, definitely we can catch up with the numbers which we have targeted. But having said that, here I am once again reiterating that it is not really for the growth that I am looking at growth. I would want to have a growth with quality. So long as it is coming with good quality, I will continue to lay emphasis on growth. Why is it that my bigger focus will be on recovery collection, handling restructured books, handling uh, SMA book, etc. So that overall metrics in terms of GNP, NP, PCR, etc. gets covered at the same time our team continues to become healthy 
and we continue to uh, uh, grow our uh, CASA base, which is going to make us more and more competitive. We will definitely grow our government channel, TASK and NR, which are really firing very well now. With all that, we hope to continue to work on improving our cost of funds because market rate is something which we cannot determine. Market rates are going to be decided by how much competition is desperate to get an asset. Therefore, what we can do is what we have in terms of liability, uh, better liability sourcing. That is something which I will continue to focus on. So that with better NIM coming in and with a very less impact on provisioning due to better quality assets, we believe that we can turn around the bank for profitability. Sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. That is on the line of Nilanjan Karpa from Nomura. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Morning. Uh, morning. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, two or three broad questions. So, uh, first one is the data. Uh, when you talked about that ECLGS account and you mentioned 166 crore, that's what I noted as slippages. Is this 166 crore the total stock of loans or just the portion of ECLGS which has left? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it is from that stock only. Whatever we, we talked about as the exposure under ECLGS, mm. as of 31 12 was 3,339 crores. Mm. Of, of which this was a sanction limit. Of which the gross uh, uh, advances as of 31st December is 2,434 crores. Out of that, the NPA is 166.82 crores. No, no, I'm sorry, I'm still confused. Uh, the sanction was 2434, which is basically you know up to 20% of the total outstanding. 3339. Sanction was 3339. Sanction limit is 3339. Yeah, no. so, which is standing as of December is 2,434. Out of that uh, total uh, ECLGS book. So, sir, just just a clarification. So that two four three four crore is the ECLGS amount plus your own you know prior exposure. No, 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 is no, that no, what no, you mean? No, no, no. Okay. And that one sixty six is it comparable to two four three four or the entire loan book? Only two four three four. Only this is uh, out of the three 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 nine. Okay, so that's so the... pertinent to this book. If your question is whether it's pertinent to only ECLG's book, the answer is yes. Right. So the actual stock of loan that has slipped is uh, from ECLG's is much higher. Maybe five this amount or three times this amount. I, I didn't understand. What, what are you saying? I didn't understand that. Stock of what? So 166 crore, is it only the sanctioned ECLG's portion? Or this is the total stock of loans to those borrowers which have slipped and had taken ETLGS. So uh, that's that total exposure of the bank to such NPAs, if you ask me. Yes. Uh, that is about 1,169 crores, correct? Great. Okay. Yeah, that was my question. 339 minus 1,169 is what I read out as gross uh, advances standing as of 31st December, which is 2434. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that clarification. Okay. Second on that SME, uh, you know, we have been giving out this average uh, average advances for, for quite quite some time. And it does look like, uh, you know, the net number of clients that we have lost is probably running at 8-10%, uh, you know. Uh, the question is, you know, you basically highlighted that the clients who have gone to competition, there is probably, you know, they are not understanding the underlying risk. My question is, you know, if SMEs that have moved and have survived to COVID ways have perhaps much better credit rating optionality. Why do you then feel that the underlying credit risk for these guys is, is getting misplaced? Uh, hey, I'm, I'm not saying that they don't know what they're doing. So first of all, I want to correct that. Each one obviously does what he or she thinks is right. So certainly that's not the comment that I was making. I was only making a comment that there is a pricing to SME risk. There is a pricing to corporate, there is a pricing to retail risk. Absolutely. So, initially we have seen that, uh, uh, especially in Indian market, if you see the history of SME book of various banks, including public sector banks and private sector banks, we have seen many of them having uh, good cycle as well as very bad cycles. And uh, many of them really had to rehash the entire SME uh, strategy also. So the limited point which I'm trying to make is 
today when an sme customer who otherwise would be in in a conventional rating he would be probably double b or even lower than that today if he is getting rates of let's say 7% or 7.25% in my view over a period this is not pricing to the risk but having said that uh, do they deserve 7% 7.25% even we are retaining customers by paying 7.25 7.5% in some of the very few sl code sme cases but we are also going down retaining many customers where as you said rightly people who have survived covid 1 covid 2 where they have uh, been able to perform at basic clear viability etc and we are clearly seeing that it's worth retaining them we are uh, going down on rates in order to retain such customers so while uh, losing i won't say that the entire base is getting lost to the competition it's only one portion of that probably mm. which are where we are not able to match the pricing or where we believe that the pricing is not justified that's the one which you lose but otherwise the, slip, the degrowth in the book is happening due to them slipping into npa and them getting restructured i mean uh, those are the other things uh, which we need to uh, look at so I'm not saying that they don't know what they are doing. I'm only saying that. No, no, sir. That was not my intention. I was just trying to, you know, double check exactly what you mentioned. The uh, pricing of SME risk is something which one needs to be cautious. That's all I'm saying. Sure. And sir, I had actually, you know, two related questions. So, could you share? You know, I'm, I'm sure as, you know, for any client that you lose, you take it very seriously. Have you broadly analyzed? You know, why are they leaving? Is it because of just the rate? or is it uh, you know something about let's say them having to put lower collaterals for example could it be service related and any time you lose this client do you also lose related accounts you know it could be promoter or family deposits investment if you can share some thoughts around these levels i mean to the extent in that you want to disclose you know first of all i want to tell you that any customer who we are losing if we are clearly seeing traction of other uh, uh, deeper relationship with them in terms of promoters um, accounts with us and uh, wealth with us or any of the other relationships we have with them we don't definitely let them go to the competition clearly we are retaining such customers because we just don't, don't look at only credit related income we look at the relationship value so clearly we don't let such accounts go at all okay. and every account which we which we eventually take a decision to uh, lose it has been taken with the application of mind to ensure that is it at all indeed worth it if you are seeing a deterioration in the performance of the customer clearly we are we are seeing that he is struggling with the covid hitting him very badly and he is probably many of the now with the gst data you know that how much of sales are they doing every month when you find that many of the months are having zero turnover etc and then many comes and asks for very fine rates today when uh, uh, when a competition is trying to lure them by offering 7.25% where the current rate which you might be servicing could be let's say 10 and a half percent or 11 percent suddenly when you are wanting to go down on 4 4 4 and a half percent of spread where we are seeing that there is a clear deterioration in the performance a drastic deterioration in the performance where there is no other relationship with the bank we don't want to retain such customers so those customers are the ones who we let go wherever the point which you made about service related uh, rate related the service related clearly there is no question i mean every just to give you share with you an insight is that customers who have who been lured by the lower rates many of them are, some of them are coming back and say why don't you come and take over us again because we are not getting the service which we are, which we were getting from you so clearly service there is no question i mean these customers are we 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 clearly have a huge edge in terms of service and it's a well known fact that um, uh, the, the banks which are clearly regional banks etc have a much better uh, relationship value with the customer in terms of uh, being an integral part of whatever happens in their family etc right uh, therefore therefore there is no question of be losing because of service issue clearly rate is an issue but rate we apply these yardsticks to figure out where it is worth retaining them where it is not worth retaining them and where it is not worth retaining them is not necessarily that a good account even if it is earning let's say 7.5% or 7.75% for a sme which i believe is something which we can live with today because our cost of funds anyway is coming down and we are constantly working on improving our cost of funds still we have a 3 3 and a half percent i mean uh, 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 at least 2 and a half to 3% uh, uh, spread which we have which, which we, if there is no delinquency we will still continue to earn for the bank so we take a very conscious call wherever we let it go Great, sir. That is very heartening. And so, uh, final question: 
uh, and again focused on SME. Uh, what do you think is the greatest hindrance for growth, at least at this point in time? Is it could you would you want to classify it as in that, because we are obviously changing, you know, the risk matrix, you know, changing the processes, changing how how they are onboarded. Uh, would you want to say that you know teaching or the frontline stuff is something that is not yet complete? Or is it more external uh, in terms of is it the weak environment overall or competition? So broadly, three yeah, things. It's, you know. a, it's a combination of things. First of all, let me tell you that uh, uh, the entire uh, restructuring of the brand structure as well as the retail asset structure, I mean the vertical asset, vertical asset structure, etc., that got completed somewhere around uh, June, July. So uh, and they, and the team started actually working in their new assigned role, uh, let's say after one, one, one month of settling down in the new job uh, which they will be signed for. And uh, we have also formed the LMB division through which we are continuously up, up, upgrading their skill by uh, making them go to e-learnings on functional skills as well as on soft skills, etc. So today, the, the team which is uh, focused on a specific business vertical, the, they are now trying to uh, they, are, they are obviously learning uh, at a much faster pace of exactly how to go and pitch to a customer and what to talk and how to uh, uh, do negotiation and what kind of risks which are there. So we are working on multiple areas to ensure that these uh, resources who are probably doing this business as a sole uh, purpose, because till now they have been uh, sitting in branches, probably they might be doing one SME deal and one retail deal. Uh, therefore, they, uh, the expertise which you expect, uh, the nuances which you expect from each of these businesses, they're in something which were, they were familiar with. Now, with the way the team is now settling down and they've started doing, like you can see the, the rate at which we are now uh, uh, growing the SME in terms of monthly disbursement and the rate at which you've grown our corporate book and even the PL book where we are using existing customer base, turning the existing customer base and where we make our uh, teams go and talk to the customer for availing pre-approved personal loan. They are learning it very fast and we have a very young workforce. So our average age workforce is 32 years. So these are young people, kids who are wanting to learn and wanting to really build their expertise in learning these areas. So so this is a this is a process which is now happening at a good pace. Having said that, maybe the economy is a normal economy with these skill sets which is getting added, probably the traction would be far more than what we are experiencing. Because of the economy being not so conducive, there are two things which are happening today. A, the opportunity for good quality assets are clearly not, uh, clearly much lesser than what you would expect in a normal economy. Right. B, because of a lesser uh, demand for uh, good quality loans and there is excess supply of uh, liquidity available in the banking system, rates are, uh, uh, given offered are clearly not something which probably a bank would want to keep it on a long term basis. So, Therefore, each bank, which is at a state of evolution, will have to do what is best for them. And especially for a bank like ours, when we are trying to churn the existing legacy issues and when we are trying to build a new quality portfolio, you must remember that I have very less leeway to keep adding any more delinquent book to my existing book because I already have very high GNP and net NPA. Therefore, I need to manage it very cautiously. At the same time, we cannot not grow, therefore you need to ensure that you grow in the right areas by focusing on improving their underwriting standards. And for improving their underwriting standards, we need not necessarily depend on employees to learn this thing. We are also using uh, the credit models developed by uh, consultants who we know are, have done a great job in this. So we are using in retail and in SME, credit models which have been built by backtesting them in the good and bad portfolio which we have built in the past and using statistical tools to ensure that we do better quality underwriting. And we are also making use of the publicly available information like uh, Sybil score and Sybil CMR rating and individual Sybil rating of those customers, etc. and GST data. So we are today we have fortunately many other data available to do a better quality underwriting. So we are making use of all of them to ensure that incremental portfolio gets added or of good quality. Perfect, sir. That's that's a, that's a very you know wholesome answer. Uh, you know, good to good to hear all of this. Thank you so much, sir. And all the Thank best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in this conference, we request you to limit your questions to one per participant only. The next question is on the line of Akhil Hazari from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Okay. Hello, good afternoon. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, so I just want to know, uh, could you give us any guidance on credit cost for FI23, FI24? Yeah, I would like to give a, a firm answer for this, but you know the situation which uh, the economy is in, I would be, uh, I will probably say that we will continue to work with the 2 to 2.5% uh, kind of uh, credit cost. That's, that's what we are looking at. Okay, fine. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Bajrang Bafna from Sunivi Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, yeah. Sir, just uh, one question. Uh, can you share, you know, the exact uh, loan book, you know, which is currently enjoying moratorium, either in terms of interest or in terms of principal, the total across different categories? This is the ECLGS figure which I... Uh, just a second. Apart from ECLGS, I think you have given that number is close to 2,500 crores. I'm um, just rounding it off. So any other uh, book which is also enjoying, uh, you know, a moratorium, either a, a interest moratorium or principal moratorium under no, standard no. advances or some other category? No, there is no such, I mean, there is not, nothing big which we need to really uh, uh, inform. I mean, typically, these are the ones which are restricted by the you clearly giving moratorium based on the guidelines which are there. Uh, uh, so other than that, I mean, if you are talking about uh, regular cost based restructuring, where we would have uh, probably given uh, uh, in the by way of restructuring, where probably with NPA restructuring or any other restructuring, that anyway, I, I don't think there, there is any big number, material number to really share. This is, if you ask me, the overall standard restructured portfolio book is what I read it out to you, which is about 2,567 crores. Okay, that includes that ECLGS also. Yeah, yeah. That is yes, standard yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Thanks. And, and sir, just on the, any guidance on the slippages, you know, I think you talked about close to 2,000 crore plus number for this year. And maybe some guidance on the next year if you could help us out because now we have built up almost 18,000 crore of the new book, which is, which is, you know, completely doing fine for the bank. So any guidance next year, you know, uh, uh, from a slippages perspective? So we, uh, very difficult to tell for the next full year, but uh, I am uh, retaining what I had projected earlier uh, for the uh, for Q4. We expect it to be around four four fifty crores. That that's what uh, we are expecting. But uh, even for Q3, I was expecting about four hundred to four fifty crores. We ended with three eighty seven. For Q4, we are projecting four fifty crores, uh, but we will we'll obviously work towards actually having it much lesser than that. Next year, it's very uh, uh, too early to talk about because we clearly do not know how uh, COVID-3 will impact and uh, uh, what, what we can, what we are definitely sharing with you is this new book is clearly, which is about, which is not given any uh, uh, issues for concern. So we, and obviously uh, that again, uh, it's too early to conclusively prove anything. Uh, so we will take it as it comes. And definitely uh, by toward the end of Q4, we will definitely uh, get a good sense of uh, how we want to, how we are looking at the coming year. We'll uh, uh, share that numbers with you. Thank you very much, sir, and all Thank the rest. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Sri Shankar from Incred. Please go ahead. Hi. Um, uh, the podcast is very well explained. Sir, your voice is breaking up. We're yeah. not able to hear you clearly. Uh, okay, can I, I'll come back later. Listen. Hello, can you hear me now? Um, yes, sir, please proceed. Uh, but my question was, uh, you explained very well about how this entire restructuring or the, uh, the way business is looked at as it changed with the bank. How much has your entire uh, the, the staff who has been doing a completely different uh, thought process, methodology for the last so many years, adapting to the new changes because while you are advocating what is required in the current environment is the personnel up to date with what is the required what are the changes that is required yeah clearly uh, see the change if you are asking about how the team is adapting to the changes which are required uh, as you said the uh, average age of our young, uh, workforce is very young and the, these are all young 
uh, professionals and many of many of them are uh, mba and uh, engineers and tata accountants etc so clearly they all have a, a great uh, learning adaptability and uh, i uh, while we are uh, i am articulating these changes i also do a continuous communication with the entire uh, bank uh, as to clearly explaining wh what we are doing and why we are doing and what is expected from us and what is expected from them and we are also equipping them with the tools which are required so that they understand clearly what they need to do and how they need to do etc so it's not just about functional competency alone we are also looking at how what kind of uh, soft behaviors which would help them to really perform well so even as uh, in the uh, uh, as earlier when i took uh, charge we had clearly articulated nine core values which we want every employee in the bank to be exhibiting and we have clearly defined how these will have to be uh, adapted in the work situation uh, across cutting across functions etc and even we have incorporated this in some of our appraisal mechanism in the feedback mechanism which we are planning to give to our employees we have uh, we are clearly articulating to them what they are good at and why they need to improve etc so that there is a overall a positive uh, change which is being brought in, in in terms of their thinking in terms of their action and clearly we are using it as a rewarding mechanism to ensure that the behavior changes stays with them so i i really do not uh, uh, i won't say that it is easy, very very easy but uh, having said that i don't think it's very difficult also because even in an existing uh, institution uh, uh, not necessarily from sib i'm saying even a, any other bank which is operating today or any other financial institution which is operating today i think the changes which are happening in the environment is uh, really so fast that even a non conventional bank today we'll have to think about how to adapt digitally the whole uh, fulfillment and how to digitally source a liability customer asset customer etc so yeah, all of them are undergoing changes and it's in a way it's easy for us because while we are instituting these changes we are also making them exposed to the latest which is happening and being a technology bank we are very very strong in, digi uh, in the technology area and uh, we have made uh, as i am talking to 93% of our transactions happen digitally so it's uh, we are actually cutting the uh, uh, learning curve very very fast and we are now comparable and we have been continuously featuring as top 10 banks in the meti index of a gov released by government of india and we have been continuously bagging awards in technology area so the team is pretty much aware that technology is going to be the future and they are already experiencing it because many of them are youngsters today they know that the everyday uh, requirement is also taken care through technology so they are adapting it very well so i i am happy to say that we are seeing good traction yes can we expect much higher productivity than what i am experiencing now i am sure i will but uh, it's also due to the fact that economy today is not very conducive i mean we are experiencing 100 year situation therefore if things were to remain go back to normal i'm sure these skill sets will definitely help us to be far more productive okay nice to hear that and uh, we have been interacting for quite some time now you had laid out your uh, strategy and good to see that you are implementing it and the effect slowly coming in thank you very much all the best to you thank you thank you so much thank you Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be taking the last question. That is from the line of Rohan Mandora from Equity Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, so thanks for the opportunity. I just think one question in terms of the new disbursement that we have done of around eighteen thousand dollar crores. Uh, what would be the incremental ROA or ROE that we are making, assuming that the credit cost is more normal based on that portfolio? uh probably we will work it out and get back to you because i don't have the ready numbers with me uh because uh, uh uh we have just started accumulating i mean if you see even the uh, the rate at which this we have built this book also good traction has happened only in the last 6 months because q2 was the first quarter where at least we had one and a half to 2 months of normal uh, pre situation and q3 all the three months were normal situation so many of these loans are also fairly young loans in terms of the tenor but we will work it out and get back to you rohan So, so ultimately, if I may ask, in terms of pricing these loans, like what is the target ROA or ROE we are keeping in mind, or and are we able to price it at that level, or it is still because of the competition price lower? So we are. Uh, 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 let let me take this into two parts. See, one is the opportunity which we are trying to exploit in the short term, where we have surplus funds available today, and which we are deploying it in, uh, let's say, any opportunity today. Whether we are able to make much more money than that by. uh taking uh by uh, doing a, a short term opportunity in terms of business discounting or whatever so we are that way we are able to onboard good customers etc where we will start penetrating more and more by offering other products to them there if you look at roe it will be probably very very uh, negligible but then card and pl etc where clearly we are 
offering uh, rates which are sizable uh, rates and we are really looking at good quality customers and offering them at a good ROE. So therefore, these products are really good earning ROEs. And even my overall, if you look at my ROI, the return on um, I mean, the interest rate which I charge, it hasn't really gone down over the last six, seven quarters. So I continue to earn close to uh, 9% in my overall book, whereas my cost of funds has been continuously coming down. Uh, cost of deposits has been coming down, even cost of funds have been coming down due to better CASA and better uh, sourcing of deposits or lower rates. So, whether I am able to get the exact ROE which I am targeting, so I am targeting double digit ROE, but this double digit ROE which I was mentioning as my deliverable was uh, with the situation when we, were, when we had uh, laid down our uh, strategy document. Uh, obviously, that was uh, much before COVID-1 huge impact and COVID-2 and COVID-3 where market rates have from then from then to now they have gone down like crazy. So clearly, while our endeavor will be to the, the target double digit ROE, uh, currently the bank first needs to get into profit, uh, which will happen with uh, more and more of good quality assets and handling of our existing legacy book and by sourcing, continuously sourcing high uh, yielding products. When we start growing those products, we will start getting much better ROE and ROE. Credit card business clearly is one where we are expecting ROAs to reach about 2%, and we are uh, already, uh, we, have wish, we have built a book of about 50 crores, and it's growing quite well. And of course, we are late entrance to these businesses, so we will take it as it comes. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the last question. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sohel Halai for his closing comments. Uh, I would like to uh, I would like to thank Ram Krishna sir for giving us this opportunity to host the call and for a detailed insight on the earnings and the changes that uh, uh, sir you are making at the bank level. Uh, before we end the call, sir, would you like to give any closing remarks? So I, I wish to thank uh, all those who have participated despite a very tough situation which we are experiencing as a country. I really appreciate uh, all those who took the efforts to take part in this and I also appreciate the kind of questions which were uh, asked, uh, clearly uh, uh, asking questions which probably helped me also to articulate how exactly we are uh, bringing about changes in the organization. I uh, hope to be uh, giving a comprehensive and as transparent as replay as possible, which I have been continuously reiterating. And I uh, wish to get support of each one of you uh, in the year, in the quarters to come. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Antic Stock Broking, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.